welcome back to my channel. Today we are filming another episode of the Lunar Nets podcast. My name is Lori and I am your host here and it's been five months since my last one so buckle up because I have some things to show you. I woke up this morning feeling very encouraged to make a podcast episode. I've kind of been dreading it because I haven't made one in so long and I just didn't know if I felt like talking about knits but this morning I feel like it and I just rolled out of bed so if I look like it great because that's the look I was going for. I decided I needed to do this now before it gets really hot outside because it's gonna get really hot in here and I have to turn off my AC because it's so loud. I just got a comment on one of my videos saying that it's too loud and that I need to have it serviced but my AC is actually brand new. It's just located right here so anytime I want to film in this room it's extraordinarily loud. It sounds like a jet rocket or something like that which it's just something I have to deal with. It's okay, I'm trying to accommodate for the video. I have my ceiling fan on low, so if you hear a little background noise, it's probably that, or my dog, Makoa. Makoa, who is sitting right behind the camera and will probably move around some. But nonetheless, you guys are here for knitwear. I briefly went back to see what I had talked about in my last video, and I grabbed most of the things. Not everything I still have, but I grabbed everything that I do have, which was most of it, and I'm going to talk about it a little bit today. What I remember anyways, like I said, this is all accumulated over five months, so I don't necessarily remember all of the details on everything, but I'll have names on the screen, photos on the screen to help you guys out. And it's Monday morning. It's my last day of vacation. I'm feeling very sad that I have to go back to work tomorrow, but it'll be okay because we have Labor Day coming up soon. <sighs> but I guess let's just dive right in. So I have two pairs of socks that I finished since the last video. I know in my previous podcast, I talked about this pair of socks. It is now a complete pair of socks. This is just a regular knit sock pattern that I used Wonderland yarn for. And also guys, I really hope you're in focus right now. I can't see what's happening, so this could be interesting. But anyways, this is Wonderland yarn. I don't remember any of the colorway names or anything, but if you go back to my very, very old podcast, you would probably be able to find it. I think I talked about it in like one of my first podcast episodes, but I'm not going to go too into detail because they're just a plain pair of socks that I always knit myself. This is my standard shorty sock that has a heel flap and gusset and not much else to say. I just wanted to show you guys that I finally finished them. And then right after I finished those, if you keep up with my videos, you know that I did a yarn stomp reviews video and I did a pair of socks in that. And here is that pair of socks. Ooh, this is knit with Premier yarn and it's like one of their cotton ones. I will have the name of it on the screen. I do not remember. I made that video so long ago, but I really enjoyed it. It's a really nice yarn for sock knitting. I have worn these a couple of times, but not a ton because summer came and I wear sandals in the summer. Sometimes I wear socks with my sandals, but not usually in the summer. This is that pair of socks. It's the exact same pattern that I used for the pair of socks I just showed you. A little shorty with heel flap and gusset. This was a self-striping type of yarn. It's a little bit of a weird color combination, I will admit, but I like it. It's perfect for socks. They held up very well. They were enjoyable to knit. And most importantly, it's an affordable yarn. Um, and just to mention, my sock blockers are from A Cute Design. My friend Jenna made them for me, and I absolutely love them. I don't know if she's still making them, but if you can get your hands on them, this is the granny square pattern. And I did go ahead and I stained mine to be a little bit darker, but yes, that's the boring stuff out of the way. Socks, you know, they're great. They're nice pieces to have, but like they're not exciting to talk about. So let's get into some of the exciting stuff. So... Something that I talked about in the last video was my Halu sweater by Caitlin Hunter. And I did actually finish that one. And I did get to wear it like a time or two before the season ended, which was really nice. But this is a sweater that I actually have the yarn that I can talk about this time. I knit it with Swift Yarns Color in Flight. And this was in the Swift DK base in the colorway Money Penny. I don't know if you can still get this. This was a gift from somebody off of Ravelry who asked if they could send me some yarn and this was in the package there was like five skeins of it which was perfect to make myself a sweater and I have a skein left over for 
socks or something which is really exciting because i really like this color if you guys have been around for a while you do know i like to wear the color orange that is the yarn i used for it it was quite nice again i don't know if you can still get this yarn or if this company is still in business but I was very thankful to have received it. And so I knew I needed to cast it on almost immediately so I could do it justice for the gift giver. And I made myself a Caitlyn Hunter sweater, as I just said. So this is the Halu sweater. I'll have photos on the screen that I took so you can get a better idea of the design because it is a little bit more dark in here right now because the sun has not made it to these windows yet. So I'm not sure how good the lighting is and I apologize if it's not great. You guys know how my videos go. I just do the best I can. But it has this gorgeous like V neckline in the front and the back. And there are short rows, so the back does sit higher than the front. And then it has a little bit of a saddle shoulder design, which I quite enjoy. And then the main feature of this sweater is obviously the thick ribbing goes into this lace bobble design. And I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see that on the camera, but hopefully you can get a little bit of an idea of it. And it's also on the sleeves as well. And I really enjoy the sleeves. They're nice and baggy, as Caitlin Hunter typically does. And it fits really well. I really love the fit of this sweater in particular because pre-blocking, it was pretty tight hugging still. And I'll have like a photo or video of it pre-blocked as well. I posted a little reel here on YouTube and then I got self-conscious and took it down. I do still think it's on Instagram though. So I'm going to try to like pop that on the screen or whatever. It's not a good reel. I'm not a reeler guys. I really wish I could, but I can't. So that is why Lunar Knits by Lori is starting to decline in followers and stuff, which doesn't bother me. I can't say it doesn't bother me at all. It does hurt a little bit because of how hard I worked on Lunar Knits by Lori through the years, but I just can't keep up with the time. So I'm not a TikToker. I'm not a reeler. I just like to do my photos and my YouTube videos. So nonetheless, I digress. It was really tight whenever I finished it. And then once I blocked it, it bloomed so lovely. And it's just a really nice fitting sweater. And it convinced me that I need to make her color work version. I have yarn, DK yarn, that I was going to make the Nanilchik Swancha with. But I'm thinking I'm going to make the color work version of this one with it. Because I really like the fit. But we'll see. Don't hold me to that. My mind is always changing on what I'm going to make. You guys probably know that. I just get in the moment and I'm like, oh, I'm going to do this. So this is going to be a staple sweater in my collection for a really long time. I have nothing but great things to say about it. It was a really easy to knit pattern. The baubles may seem intimidating, but there's not so many baubles where you're getting overwhelmed and they're in a really good location within the lace pattern that you're not doing a whole bunch of lace and baubles at the same time. Now you do have to concentrate a little bit more than just the stockinette body, but it was a really enjoyable pattern and she made baubles very easy. And then you have a couple on the sleeves as well. And these are really nice baubles because they actually stand out. In the past when I've done baubles, the baubles kind of want to poke back in, but not these ones. So I highly recommend checking out this pattern. I don't knit too many Caitlin Hunter patterns anymore, but this is one that I really do recommend to you guys. Totally my style. I like that it's all one color and it's just like a subtle, nice sweater that I'm going to be able to enjoy for a really long time. So that's all I have to say about this one because I don't really remember too much about it if I'm being totally honest. You can check out my last podcast where I would have been m more fresh in my mind because I was more actively working on it. But this has been finished probably for about four or five months now. So I don't remember a lot, unfortunately. I apologize. The sweater I finished after that was another Yarn Stop Review sweater, which I do not have here. I did end up donating it because I did not enjoy the yarn if you saw that video. But I will put a photo of it on the screen, the sweater that I finished. I don't have a photo of it on because, again, it was a hideous sweater after I finished it. And I did not enjoy. So, yeah, I finished that. And then I think I started, I think I talked about this in my last video. I don't know if I did or not, but <laughs> never mind. That's a whip. Is it weird to go back and forth between finished objects and whips? Yeah, we'll wait. Okay, we'll go on to the next finished object so you don't get confused. And that would be this Cinch Me Up top. This is a pattern by a designer. I don't remember her name, but it has like a little cinch in the front. I'll put a photo of it finished on. 
as well as the name and everything on the screen. I've already said that like a hundred times. I apologize. But this is the Cinch Me Up top. And this is a really cute pattern. It worked out really well for me. I have a little bit of the yarn left over. This was a knit crate yarn. It's a cotton type of yarn. I don't really remember the name or any of the specs of it. I do apologize. I thought I kept the label, but I guess I didn't because it's been a while since I finished this. But I do have a little bit left. I don't know what I would do with such a small amount of like a DK weight yarn, but I'm obviously going to keep it because who knows, maybe I'll want to extend this or add sleeves to this because this pattern does have like a cap sleeve that you can add to it. And I originally thought I was going to add sleeves, but I was kind of just over this pattern by the time I finished it for two reasons. One, this pattern is knit flat, so there is a lot of knitting and purling, which doesn't really bother me too much. I don't mind purling. I find that I purl much in the same way that I knit but the details of this pattern are what killed me. Okay, so editing Lori here, I realized there was actually three parts of this pattern that like stressed me out. So when I had started the pattern, I had like put it down for a little while and then was gonna come back to it. And when I came back to it, I was ready to like join the front and the back together. And when I did that, I actually twisted the one of the shoulders so I'll insert a photo I found on my Instagram story while I was trying to find other things for this video. But I twisted like one of the shoulders so it wasn't the right way. But luckily I had noticed it like right at the start of joining the back and the front. So I was able to twist my needle through the armhole and correct the issue so the strap was no longer twist twist it there was just a little bitty stitch under the arm that was twisted that literally nobody's ever going to notice not even myself I wouldn't even be able to tell you which arm it was probably so that is a pro tip if you catch it quick enough you can just do a little jimmy rigging with your needles and you should be able to correct the twisted shoulder but I just wanted to pop in here and say that as well just be careful when you're knitting because Mistakes like that can really set you back and discourage you and want to make you quit knitting again because I was knitting this pattern when I was definitely still dealing with a knitting slump and I was picking it back up trying to get out of that slump and then I made that error and I almost quit again but I persevered so I just want to throw that in here. Okay, bye. So by the time I finished the body and everything, I had to make this eye cord, which was fine. I think I did a crochet eye cord because I did not want to do a knit one. And then you have to sew the middle like pocket for the eye cord. And in my mind, while I was making the eye cord, I was like, I am going to pin the tubing around the eye cord. So I'm going to sew with the eye cord in so I don't have to thread the eye cord in later. The pattern says to sew it down and then thread the eye cord in. So I was like, oh, fine, I'll just follow the pattern. And that was my biggest regret. If you are going to make this pattern, which I do recommend because it's a very nice, cute pattern. It fits really well. However, I recommend 100% to put the eye cord in and then fold the tubing around it so you're done. You don't have to thread the eye cord through because that was a pain in the butt. Really took me the longest time because after I sewed down the tubing, it was really hard to get the eye cord through. That's all I have to say. I mean, threading something this thick through like a this is a cotton blend like cotton silk blend type of yarn like it's very it's very splitty it's very silky feeling it's very stretchy so it just made it really difficult to get it through there as you can see my eye cord pulled a little in some spots it's not the nicest but I made it work I finally got it through it took me way longer than I'd like to admit but in the end, it was worth it. I do know that while I was doing it, there were certain parts that pulled along the actual knit it stock and net part, which you can't tell once you have it all cinched up, which is fine. But that's my biggest tip in this pattern. Just go ahead, lay your eye cord down. Once you have your eye cord laid down, then fold your tubing around it and pin it into place and then sew it. That way you don't end up having to do what I did and it was just a headache. But in the end, it worked out, so it's fine. But nonetheless, once I finished doing that, I had no desire to work on this pattern anymore. So there were no sleeves going to be happening, which is fine because I like the tank top version. Originally, I was like, oh, I want to do the tank top version. And then I was like, no, let me do the cap sleeve version. But I'm glad I stopped there because it looks really good. Another thing that I changed in the pattern 
is I slipped the first stitch of every single row. It doesn't call for you to do that, but I think it gives you a little bit cleaner of a like finish than if you don't slip it. She doesn't say to slip it and she also doesn't tell you to go back and add any like I cord design or anything on it, which is why I decided to slip the first stitch of every row throughout the whole pattern. So basically on this pattern, it's one of those like new traditional type of drop shoulder type of patterns if you will you knit the back panel first and then here are I, I have seams right here you're probably not going to be able to see it's pretty hidden but you have your seams so that is where I picked up for the front straps and then you just make the front straps until you're ready to join at the armholes then you join the front and the back and you knit the body it's all knit flat and then yeah you just finish up the front detailing which mine is not perfect like I said I don't know if you'll be able to tell it's not perfect but it works and um, on the bottom you just do like a garter stitch little bit so it's kind of cuter than just like a raw hem and yeah I really liked this yarn it was such an even dye lot which I was pretty surprised at it is kind of like a beigey I don't know sandy color is how I would describe it to you and this is like a chain net yarn if you guys care that this is not the type of yarn that the pattern called for like size wise I don't think I ended up I think it calls for like a worsted weight and this is definitely more of a sport DK weight so what I did was I knit the largest size and I went up a needle size which I would have gone up a needle size regardless of what I was doing I did not swatch I never swatch you guys know I always go up at least one to two needle sizes depending on if I know the pattern designer or not because I knit extremely tightly and I know that about myself. So I went up a needle size and I knit the very largest size and it fits me like perfect. This is the absolute best size I could have knit for myself. I don't think it's the most size inclusive pattern if I recall. It doesn't go up to a very large bust size. So that's something to be aware of. Um, and if you're adjusting with yarn types like I did, you may run into a bit of an issue. But overall, I really enjoyed the pattern. I'm glad I stuck through it and finished it because it's really cute. I haven't worn it out yet. It is very boobalicious, which I'm still getting comfortable with because boobs. That's, I don't know. I just feel like they're always hanging out whenever I have low cut tops on. So we're still working on getting comfortable with that now that I have gained weight over the years and I have my own boobs. So yes. Anyways, moving on from that, because that was weird, I have my next and final finished object that I'm going to talk about today. I feel like I've done good, you guys. I feel happy with the things I've accomplished over the last five months. Whew, I need to take a deep breath. Hopefully this is all still recording. Hopefully it's still all in focus, and hopefully you can see me. I'm a little nervous, but the most recent finished object that I have here is called the Rota Top. R-O-T-A and it is an all over cable lace design and this was in one of my yarn stop reviews videos and I use Lion Brand re-spun, re-new, reused uh, cotton polyester yarn and I did a re whole review on the yarn so I'm not going to go too into depth in the yarn. It's the green color way. I'll have the video linked down below maybe if I remember but I'll definitely have the pattern linked down below. But I really like this top. I have had this top on my mind for a very long time. I saw Emily Green talk about it, I believe, and I was like, I need to make that. So I immediately added it to my favorites on Ravelry. Sorry, I'm moving around so much. I'm not comfortable. Ugh, I'm getting old and sitting on the floor is hard, okay? But anyways, I immediately added it to my library on Ravelry, and then I was walking through Joanne's trying to find a specific yarn. I couldn't find it, and then I saw this yarn. So I grabbed it and decided that I'm going to use it to make this top, and I'm glad I did, because it's a very nice pairing. It's a more structured version, I think, than what hers is. Although, hers uses the same type of yarn. She uses a cotton acrylic blend and this is a cotton polyester blend so very similar but I think my gauge was a little tighter than what she calls for but it turned out really nicely it is all over pretty much cable like lace because you do some yarn over so I'm considering it lace but there's definitely a lot of cabling in here and 
As you can see, there's also a cable design on the side, which I absolutely love with a split hem. I think I made the third size, but it's broken up a little bit with like a ribbing striping in there. And then your shoulders are like a nice rib design. And then you got two by two ribbing all over like the neckline, the armholes and the bottom. And it just looks so clean. It looks so good on. I'm going to have a photo on the screen for you, of course, but I do really recommend now. Like I said, I think my gauge is a little smaller than hers, so it's not as see-through with the yarn overs as hers is. So I can honestly get away without wearing anything under this but a bra, and you probably wouldn't be able to tell, but you would need to consider that option if you are going closer to her gauge, I would say, because you probably will be able to see through this a little bit. So just for wearability, keep that in mind. I do have a tank top this green color that I wore with it, and it was fine but it's very cute. It's nice and thick and dense and it took me a month to knit. It took me, yeah, I think like a full-ish month, right around that amount of time, which felt really good to me because this is a lot of detail in this design and I wanted to make sure I knit it long enough. So this is why I think my gauge wasn't right because after you finish like your second cable here that's where she tells you to start the ribbing and it is supposed to be cropped and then in the pattern it says if you want to extend it a little bit more do another cable and so I ended up doing that and because I could not like this would not have covered my boobs if I stopped where she said to stop for the cropped version like it would have been like here so that's how I think that my gauge was off at least row wise so keep that in mind. It's very easy to modify the body to make it longer. And it was also very easy to make this pattern without a cable needle. I did not use a cable needle for the bulk of the design. I did use a cable needle for these cables on the side because it's more than one. But everything else is just like one stitch. So you just kind of like swap them or knit them right off your needles easily. So I think that's what made it doable for me because I didn't have to use a cable needle every two stitches or whatever it is. So yeah, I had a lot of fun making this pattern and I'm going to have a lot of fun wearing it. I finished it pretty recently, so I haven't enjoyed wearing it just yet, but I do hope to enjoy it at least one time before the summer is over if I can gain the confidence. I find that wearing knits out is, it takes a lot of confidence to do. I don't know why, but I feel self-conscious when I wear my own knitted garments out, even though I think that they look nice and I'm impressed by them. I don't know I just feel like people are gonna be able to tell that it's handmade and that I don't know why it feels awkward but it kind of feels awkward do any of you ever feel that way or is that just me I don't know that's all I have to say about my Rota top I really really love this pattern and I'm so happy that I knit it I would totally knit another one in the future if I ever felt like I needed another one but at this time I'm good with my one I really love this side detail where like the cable splits into the hem I think it looks really nice and clean and very thoughtful. This was a very thoughtful pattern. And I think she has other versions of this pattern as well. So you should definitely check out her patterns on Ravelry. Again, I'll have all the patterns linked down below for sure. I always do that. And I need to take a deep breath. I should have brought some water in here. I should probably also see if this is still recording. I... Also getting very excited before I go into my whips. I am waiting for a package from Amazon today. I ordered another grow light for my bathroom, which I have a very exciting thing that I picked up this weekend in my bathroom now that hopefully I'll make a video on eventually. So I'm not going to spoil it just yet, but it does have to do with plants, obviously. But I ordered a new grow light to, it's like a dupe for the Soltech solution ones that I have in my bathroom or my bedroom in my living room. So I'm going to do a comparison video like on the Soltech Solution dupe light because it's significantly cheaper. My best friend has one and she was like, yeah, you should try it out. So I ordered one of those for my bathroom and it should be coming today. So I'm very excited. Every time I hear a truck go by, I'm like, is that it? But I digress. Let's get back into the knitting because that is what you're here for. But if you're one of my planty people as well, keep an eye out. I have some exciting plant videos coming for you, I hope. Anyways, I am going to go into my work in progress. I might have talked about this one before. I'm not quite sure. I feel like I have, 
but we've been through a lot and I have some things that I've worked through and now I'm back to knitting on it. So this is my current project. This is the one I'm trying to finish before I dive into some craft sew stuff. I am going to do a craft show again this year. I think I'm going to make a video about the process just like I did last year to hold myself accountable. But I think my theme is going to be like throwback, but I can't I can't decide if I want it to be like throwback to my old styles or throwback to like, you know, trendy like 90s and 70s stuff. So we'll see. But after I finish this sweater, I have to start on craft show stuff because it's the end of August. The craft show I'm going to do is in November. So I got to get on it, but I'm not doing a luxury line like I did last year. So it should be a little bit more enjoyable to work on. Fingers crossed because... Whew, last year was rough. Anyways, this is the Good Willow pullover. And this is a very throwback sweater to me. It really reminds me of like early 2000s. And that is why I love it so much. But this is where I'm at on it. I am on the body. I have my progress keeper here after I tried on last night. I know that I need to basically double the body and length and then I'll be ready to do the ribbing and bind off the body. It looks really long already. But you have to keep in mind, this is like a ribbed cable design. So it's going to stretch a lot. And when it stretches this way, it's going to lose length this way. So you have to keep that in mind. It's going to look a little silly. And then when you put it on, it stretches out and looks really cute. But this is a pattern that has a drop shoulder. So you knit the back panel first. Then you start, you pick up for the front panel and you knit some color work, which is knit flat, but you're only doing very little. So knitting it flat is like you're doing basically a rows purling of color work barely anything it goes super fast so if you are kind of experienced with color work just like you have a little bit under your belt I think you would be fine doing this I don't think knitting color work flat is in as intimidating as I always thought it was I actually think I enjoy it better than knitting it in the round so there's that talking a lot and I'm losing my breath and now I'm getting all snotty and drainy which is gross so sorry but I am knitting this sweater with Explorer Knits and Fibers cashmere yarn and the main colorway is Lone Wolf and I had three skeins of this yarn. I did not compare the skeins to each other when I started this pattern. So the first skein that I used for the top portion, which was all knit flat, was a completely different color than these two skeins of yarn. Much darker and very noticeable color dye difference and I noticed that only when I finished the first skein I was about right here or so on the body and I finished the first skein and so I just wound up the second skein and I went to do the sleeve because I like to do that I like to go straight into the sleeve after I finish whatever I have left of the first skein so nothing's hanging off of it and I like to do the sleeves first well when I went to do the sleeves that's when I realized that's when I realized the next skein of yarn was a totally different color it was so much lighter I have a photo I'll put on the screen as well and so I was pretty bummed and then in the body there was also some unappealing pooling that started happening when I started knitting in the round so I also wasn't too thrilled about that so I decided to put this sweater on hold for a few months actually and I recently just picked it back up probably this last week or so and I did some sweater surgery on it so I put some needles back in um like about an inch under the underarm and then I ripped out the rest of the body so I could fade in the new skein because if I didn't do that I need it to basically alternate skeins I was not alternating skeins at all so this is totally my fault I know with hand dyed yarn that the skeins the dye lots they're gonna differ and you take a risk if you don't alternate your skeins so my only option was I needed to rip back in the body as much as I could and I needed to alternate my lighter skein in because I was going to have a definite line. So I ripped off the sleeve and I was just like, we'll, we'll worry about that later. I need to worry about the body right now. So I had a little bit of this body color left over from another project that I started that I didn't like it. So I ripped that up and I have it set to the side so I can fade in for the sleeve so I don't have a big line and a noticeable difference. So that's what I'm going to do for the sleeve. So in the body, I ripped it out and then I started alternating skeins with the newer skein so it wouldn't be so obvious. It's still kind of obvious. So I can't, that's my own fault. You can kind of see right here, it's much darker up top than it is down at the bottom. But I alternated skeins for as much as I could. And then I started knitting just with this yarn. 
And then I had another small ball of the main, this top color, the first dye lot. And so after a little bit of knitting, I decided to start fading in that other skein a little bit as well, just so it was a little bit more, less obvious again. So you can kind of see a light area. That's where I was just knitting with the one skein. And then I started again with the two skeins. So it got a little darker again. And now I'm just knitting with the one skein for the rest of the body. It is what it is. It kind of is a bummer, but that's on me. I could either rip out the whole sweater and start over, which I'm not going to do, or I can just deal with it. And I'm just going to deal with it. I think I've made it so I'm not so obsessed with the way that it looks. I think it looks fine enough where I'm not going to notice it as much. And then once you get it all stretched out, like the colors kind of fade together a little bit better. So I think it'll be even less noticeable if you guys can tell. It's kind of hard to show when it's still in the needles, but I'll have photos of it and stuff whenever it's done, post it on Instagram. Hopefully I'll film another podcast or whatever, but that's what's been going on with this pattern. I have some of the first eyelet set aside so I can fade in for both of the sleeves so it won't look so stark difference like it did before. And then the body has... It is what it is now with the one skein of yarn. It's going to be much lighter. But if I was going to have it this way, I'm glad I had the darker one up top and not the lighter one because I do prefer darker colors up by my face rather than the lighter colors that I tend feel tend to wash me out a little bit. So yeah, that's just where we're at. I'm still plugging away at the body. It's a very, very simple cable design. I am using a cable needle for it, but you totally wouldn't have to if you're more experienced with the cable cabling without a cable needle than I am. I'm more of a two cable stitch kind of girl that I can do without it, but anything more than that, I like to use one. So I probably have another seven cables to do before I finish the body and then I'll move on to the sleeves and then we'll be done. I really wanna have this done. I almost was just gonna like give up on it forever. And then I just got like a wild hair and I was like, let me finish that. So I'm really happy that I decided to go in and fix it. And I am just plugging away on it. It's pretty mindless. I don't have to look at the pattern anymore. It's a very easy to memorize pattern once you get to the body. So I'm happy about that. I'm excited to start on the sleeves because then that means I am almost done. Woo! And that is that. I don't have any upcoming patterns that I'm going to be working on. Like I said, I'm going to start some craft show stuff. I'll probably make a video about that just because I think it'll be fun. I did one last year, I'm pretty sure, and I enjoyed doing it. Again, it holds me accountable. I don't know exactly what I'm doing yet. I know I'm gonna have my normal ear warmers and I'm gonna do scrunchies, and then I'm trying to figure out what hats I want to do because that is the most important part of my booth. I do know I wanna keep it cost friendly for myself, but as well as for shoppers, because as we know, the economy is a little, questionable right now so I don't want to do what I did last year and have $50 hats I'd rather have $25 hats so I will be using bulkier yarn again which will be good for my hands and for timing so that is what I know about that I have a lot of plant updates that I want to show you guys at the end of the season I have some cool plant videos I want to do so that's exciting I've been reading a lot I got a kindle for prime day and I am loving the kindle you guys so yeah the Libby app we're friends. I used my first audiobook this weekend, which was really exciting. So that was cool. And what else is going on? I don't know. Makoa has a vet appointment tomorrow and I have work again tomorrow. I wish we didn't have to work, guys. I wish I could do winter nights full time again. I just wish life were simple again, but we have to adult. So I got to get through these Sunday slash Monday scaries. I had a long weekend, which is really nice. So I just I don't know. I gotta get prepared to go get my groceries here in a little bit and I think I'm gonna make myself some breakfast now and I'm gonna go. So thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below on what you are working on or if you're doing a craft show this year, what you're bringing. And if you like this video and want to see more random content, subscribe to my channel. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!